Well, uh, to, to start asking about how you got interested in doing this sort of, of stuff with the pine cones and the, the flowers fans. and the leaves. I really just think living in the area and in the woods, you know, to it's been part of our lives and it grows on you as you, as time goes on, you see it, you know, and you, you read about uh, the, how much use there is to pine cones and the things that you can do with them and all, and the first thing you know, you're doing things and enjoying it and yeah. getting deeper in it. We, I have never made them for money. I make them for our church festivals or for gifts or, you know, to do, or if somebody else is having something, I'd like to make them a little wreath, a couple of wreaths mm -hmm. or something. But I have never made them for money, just for fun, you know. Yeah. How, how'd you learn how to make them? Well, uh, just by, for no reason at all, made them in all different ways. Now this is just pasted on a piece of cardboard, this one here. You can see, mm -hmm. just a little, it wouldn't take a lot of abuse, but for an indoor wreath, it's a, uh, you oh, see? Yeah, and it's just pasted on Just, oh. yeah, see on a piece of cardboard. Usually, they have a frame out now, which uh, my daughter had seen them up at the Berlin Auction. That's an, a big place where they have everything. Have you ever been there? No. No, you must get there, part of what goes on in South Jersey. And they have these wreaths. Now, I don't have any of them here now. I probably have, I have a couple of cone wreaths up in the attic I should have gotten down to that are used with this form. And you put the wreaths in there and in all different directions, and that makes a wreath too. But I had seen this, you know, where at places that they did this, then you figure it out for yourself. And they're but, glued with linoleum paste. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is. Mm hmm. Now I wouldn't say we have, I have made some that were sold for outside and all, I haven't had any complaints about them, but I wouldn't be too, sh you know, I wouldn't encourage it to be used outside. But they do have waterproof linoleum paper, yeah. I think you could use that for the outside. Okay. If you got a husband, you get in all kind of trouble, it's not account of the, he gets burned up because I put all this stuff in his shed, you know, and yeah. the first thing you know, he claims he has no place to put it. <laughs> I like to, uh, when I started the grapevine bit, I went to, uh, I picked up the artificial grapes and I used that a lot. Uh -huh. But I just got them second hand and I told so many people, now I can't find them anymore. Everybody's doing a save, don't pay to talk so much. But, <laughs> you know, that that would cost you three or four dollars today. And now maybe I paid 50 cents for it at an auction or yeah. a yard sale or something. But uh, And the Berlin auction is where they, it's well, like they have a lot of junkies there, you know, and you yeah. walk around and... How long often is that held? It's open on Thursdays. Well, Thursdays, it's the big building, but on Saturday and Sundays, they're out. Well, so you can things like uh, peaches, yeah. beets. Uh -huh. Beets, peaches, beets, lima beans. I can take you in the cellar if you don't look at yeah. my cellar and I'll show you some of the yeah. things. We've been spending a lot of time in people's cellars lately, I but... Oh, boy, you haven't seen any like this. <laughs> How are they? Are they all nice and neat, lined up, very nice? All right, we'll let you go, Dan. Well, if you were, if you were in Hamilton, you probably saw the wine barrels in the cellar then. My wife's specialty is dandelion wine. Now, you make that in the spring? Yes, yeah, when the dandelions bloom. And... So how do you make dandelion wine? Well... I pick the blossoms. That's one thing I never have any help with, believe me. <laughs> I used to have help with neighborhood kids when they were little and it was adorable. And while I was picking these, I used to think, oh, I can't say nothing. But all the while I was wondering about the little strands of garlic, you know, that came off with the blossoms. So I wa picked them out, washed them, rinsed them off, put them in my big preserving pot and poured boiling water over them. Amounts, you know, to whatever. I don't know exactly what amounts. I don't measure anything when I can or bake or... But uh, then when that cools off, I slice a few oranges and lemons in it and I leave that all sit overnight till it cools off. Then the next day I get all my colanders out and put cheesecloth over them and strain it all, put it into a crock, 
put a yeast cake in it and leave it sit until it's well done fermenting, which is a guess, you know, I never know. And I think it's about, oh, I throw a few, a few raisins in the crop hmm. too. What are they supposed to do? I help it ferment. There's action. I guess you put raisins in lots of things to cause. When I lift the cheesecloth up over the crop, well, you hear it sizzling in there, you know, and it really makes a noise. And then when that sort of subsides a little bit, that noise, then I, um, I bottle it. I just put it in gallon jugs so that um, I can leave the sediment go, and then later on I'll rack it off or whatever you call it, to, yeah. it, to put it in bottles. But I don't cap it securely. Well, the crock that we made the uh, dandelion wine in today that has sauerkraut in it. Oh, really? Oh, boy. Yeah. It's in the fermenting stage now. How long? And you don't, do you have any, like, estimate of how long it takes to ferment? For the uh, dandelion wine, I usually say about 10 or 12 days, sometime two weeks. It depends on the weather, too. You know, if it gets hot and gets hot in the kitchen and all where we have it, makes a big difference. And the same with the sauerkraut now. We have the little wood stove on in the kitchen now. I've never made sauerkraut this late, yeah. but we just happen to have the cabbage, so uh, yeah. we're utilizing it, you know, to... Where do you get the um, the, the produce that, that you use, do? Uh, do mostly, we usually raise it, or some of my family has it. I have a lot of brothers and different ones around that have um, raised gardens. If they have extra, they'll say, you know, come and get this. This is mm -hmm. going to waste or the cabbage is splitting in the field or something and I'll get it. So So you rarely have to, to buy something at a produce market? No, anymore. no, never. Then I probably wouldn't make as much stuff, you know, yeah. because... Uh, Do most of the women in your family can? Yes, yes they do. How about the younger generation? Well, let's see. My daughters do. Well, my daughter, one daughter is a nurse, Barbara and mm -hmm. Hazel. Now this year Hazel's working and she, and tomatoes were so hard to get. We used to get together and I help her can a hundred quarts of tomatoes. But she said, mother, forget about it this year. She said that, you know, they we would have to go out and buy them, I guess. And I thought as long as she feels that way, I'm not going to push her, you know. Yeah. I have a few jars for both of them. It's been a poor year for all of us. Yeah. Them. I can some for Hazel and some for Barbara. They didn't get them yet, but they will. And what they need after that, why? I, we have never eaten a can of tomatoes in our lives. I don't think really? any of us enter our family oh, wise, really. Geez. So if you, you have extras, you'll, you'll share them with people in the family yes and right yeah and that's what I use for my gifts I have lots of friends or relatives who are generous with us and all but that's what I give for gifts it didn't move now when we came home today I looked around out in the garden and I see we had some nice heads it took that long for it to develop yeah. so that's what I'm going to make today I had some red and green peppers we're picking our first peppers if you can believe that this way now. Yeah. Um, What's your favorite kind of pickle? What was that? What's your favorite kind of pickle? Well, sweet sour, I would say. Are those the same as bread pickles. and butter pickles? Bre sort of, yeah. Sweet pickles. Sweet pickles. Sort of. yeah. yeah. All pickles are sour, too. They have vinegar. What sort of things do you bake? Everything, whatever. For the moment thing. Donuts to bread. Yeah. Mm. I, uh, make a lot of yeast dough. Famous for my a Fasnacht, which is a German doughnut. You ever heard of Fasnacht is a a word that's used it's German in the Lenten season. You know how the English have the doughnut day and the pancake day mm -hmm. and all that when the Lenten season mm -hmm. starts. Well the Germans have a Fasnacht. It's called feast night. And I guess you stuff yourself with these before, and then you're supposed to lay off of it how you, uh, you know, during yeah. Lent, some people fast and all. That's part of your German background? I think, think so, yes. Mm -hmm. My father was a baker, and he used to make these before on uh, Shrove Tuesday. He made them. When we come home from school, he had this big 
wash tub lined with paper bags, you know, to absorb it. And we would have to deliver them to all the neighbors. Hmm. All the kids take a bag here and take a bag there. So we do the same thing. I don't make as many, but I make plenty. And believe me, the people let us know beforehand, you know, what's coming up. And <laughs> yeah. They put their orders in. Right. Huh? <laughs> I know our, our former pastor from our church, he just reminds me, you know, it's time for that. And also for his bottle of dandelion wine, which he gets for his birthday at Christmas time oh, every year. My grandfather used to make it, but I... I was a kid when he did. Yeah. I don't remember really what it what it tasted when like. When we uh, first were married, the neighbor next door had a lot of grapes, and he said, "George, he said, how about he said, I'll furnish the barrel and the grapes." He said, "We'll make some wine." I said, "Okay." So uh, we made this big fifty-five gallon barrel of wine and had it down in the cellar. And uh, one day I went down the cellar, and the wine started running. I saw the wine running across the floor, and here the termites had eaten. Up into the wine bar, oh, no. there went the wine. Oh, what a mess. Um, my granddaughter was just 16, and she said, Gran, I want a bottle of your dandelion wine, she said, that I want to use the day I get married. So I had this real pretty, a real old bottle, and a niece of mine had uh, drew me a, a label. She's a very clever artist. She drew me a label with dandelion blossoms mm -hmm. and leaves on it and she wrote on there Zimmer's famous something <laughs> I forget what it was and then she put the vintage on and all and I gave that label to Carolyn on that and they have it sitting in their living room on the shelf in there and it's just as clear and beautiful I was looking at it last night did you mm -hmm. notice George how pretty it is do you make anything special say at Christmas time uh, me cook baked, yeah, many baked things wise, uh, cookies and uh, stolen I make, mm. a lot of stolen. Give them for gifts too. They are very much appreciated. Do you ever make fruit cake? Yes, make fruit cake. Mm -hmm. well, I don't make it as much as I used to, because mo lots of people make their own, and there's so many sales going on that people, mm -hmm. churches. You know, these companies get you to sell this and that. And so many people buy their own fruit cake. And it's so expensive to make today. So I, you know, I make the stolen just for the holiday season. So, so are you basic, do you basically take a supporting role in the kitchen? She's, she's the boss. And I peel the apples and the, the onions and the uh, peaches. Yeah. Yeah, since he's retired, he does. I used to do it all myself, but it is a help now that Georgia peels. You know, I can get started, especially canning string beans. He'll clean them, and I can get the jars ready and washed, and, and the lima beans he'll peel. And sometimes I wonder how I did all that with three little kids, you know, but you do it, and uh, I always enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Now what's this? Is this more of the dough? No, I just see that in here now to show you. My niece just gave me that the other day. That's, she was cleaning chickens to, that they raised themselves to put in the freezer. This is chicken fat. Mm. Oh. This is what I get my source of. And I'll take it and I'll put it on here in a real heavy pot on the little wood stove and it'll render it, you know, real nice. Mm. This is after it's rendered. Oh, it's I have to put it in the freezer now. I thought I had it in there because it will get moldy after. Mm -hmm. I moved it to about two weeks ago. And then you do you use that mostly for all your cooking? And for a, mostly for my yeast dough mm -hmm. in place of, well, butter or lard or whatever you use. If I had chicken fat, and it makes it such a beautiful color, and it's just mm -hmm. tender and luscious. It really is. Yeah, you make me wish you did have some Yeah, right. <laughs> right. You're going to put the peppers here? No, we're, that's what we're making with chow chow out of that. Get this stuff all cut up, too. I've got to be sure uh, to take a picture of that. All right. Go. The onions and the peppers. Beautiful. And, and celery and uh, the cauliflower will go in there. Oh, this looks just wonderful. Not everybody likes uh, peach 
too, mm -hmm. but it was a good day for it, so I just uh, Let's say a little grace. Mm -hmm. God is gracious. gracious God, God is good. good. And, and we, we thank, thank him, him for his food. By, by his, his hand, hand we all are fed. Give us, Lord, our daily bread. bread. Amen. Amen.